We've got trade news for you. Adrian Wojnarowski is reporting that the Lakers have agreed to a deal to acquire Washington Wizards forward Rui Hachimura. That's in exchange for Kendrick Nunn and three second-round picks. Hachimura was the ninth overall pick out of Gonzaga, remember, in the 2019 NBA draft. Here now with Woj. So, Woj, can you just back us up a little bit here? How exactly did this trade come together? Hey, Malika, there were discussions as late as last night uh, that included bigger trades than just a two-way deal with L.A. I was told uh, that there were some three-way talks that would have involved Phoenix, uh, but those larger trade discussions fell by the wayside. And then L.A. and Washington this morning uh, zeroed in on the deal that they ultimately landed on, Rui Hachimura, uh, for Kendrick Nunn and those three second-round picks a 2023 pick that L.A. has via Chicago and the Lakers' own 2029 pick. And this was a player, Hachimura, who uh, had wanted to be moved, did not reach a contract extension uh, on his rookie rookie extension this summer uh, and into the fall with Washington and wanted to be finishing games. That wasn't happening. And Kyle Kuzma certainly uh, moved into a, 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 a you know significant role in this Wizards front line and i think for washington uh this is a chance for them you know to move on from hachimura uh and you know get some draft capital back without taking salary back from the lakers and a laker team now that obviously uh with hachimura you know gets a young uh, wing player wing defender uh three-point shooter Mm -hmm. uh, a corner three-point shooter he's shown some success doing that in the last couple years and and i'm told the lakers certainly would like to sign Hachimura to an extension this summer. He'll be a restricted free agent. But this, you know, gets another young, big wing, big wing in uh, that Laker lineup who can defend and, and obviously uh, make some open shots. They needed more shooting on this Laker team, and it's a player that they help, they hope can help right away, and they certainly hope they can develop over time and uh, into the kind of player people thought he would be when he was picked in the top 10 out of Gonzaga. Interesting. So Rui Hachimura, you're reporting on his way to Los Angeles. Woj, thank you very much. I want to bring it out to the entire panel now here with Ramona Shelburne, Richard Jefferson, Shanae Agumake, Kendrick Perkins is going to be joining us Uh, in just a little bit. uh, Fix your face. Ramona, let's start with you here. What what more can you tell us about what the Lakers are hoping to get with Rui Hachimura Hachimura being added to this roster? Well, they they like that he's a big defender, 6'9", can play on the wings and, and in that mold like Markeith Morris when they had him on that championship team can they, their analytics suggest that he has had good stretches where he could hit that corner three and when LeBron plays with guys like that he generally tends to elevate their games and so they've had some success finding some good role players lately mm. last night against Portland Thomas Bryant Dennis Schroeder those are guys that they got for minimum deals they they, they did not have to do much with these guys and they found some gems they're hoping Hachimura can be in the same role here because they think they'll play, that he will play well next to LeBron James. They have enough guards. Right. But the way Dennis Schroeder's play, the way Pat Bev is starting to play, they have enough guards. Kendrick Nunn was expendable here. They need more size. Interesting. Rich, your thoughts on this trade? Why are you messing with me? No, no, no. no but listen. <laughs> good job, baby. <laughs> it is an improvement. Like, Hachimura is a very good player. Like, again, you look at, like, Thomas Bryan and what he's been doing. I, I believe he was the backup to Rui or right before he got there. So, like, you look at the mold, he's a more skilled player. But similar effort, body types, they can do similar things. I like Thomas Bryant. It yep. is an improvement over Kendrick Nunn. Like, the second-round picks, we look at the second-round picks and say, oh, that's not a lot. But understand, the Lakers only have so many assets. So if you're taking away those second-round picks, which do have value, mm-hmm. maybe not the first rounds that everyone is talking about, but if you don't want to give up those first rounds, your second round is the only one that you have a little yeah. bit of leverage with. So you give away three for them. Now you're limited in those assets, and then you look and say, okay, is he going to make us that much better? Well, look, the Lakers were – Look, great comeback last night, but they are better with him, so I'll give them that. Is this a deal break or is this a a needle mover? Is this going to move him from eight to six? I don't think so, but it is a step in the right direction. Yeah, I like the durability factor. I know apart from his, you know, stretches where he's been injured, just by his size, his physique, we all know LeBron James thrives with shooting and also athletic wings. And then you look at the rotations, Anthony Davis coming back soon, Thomas Bryant obviously doing a great job, and then LeBron even playing 
playing the four, you know, technically in lineups. You insert him where maybe you're worried about AD's durability moving forward, but then now you have someone that can sort of split the minutes, can guard some bigs, can get out, stretch the floor, knock down a shot, because we all know the number one necessity to play great alongside LeBron James is being able to stretch the defense out so LeBron can get to the rim yeah. and do what he does best. LeBron will hit some jumpers, but he really wants to get to the paint. So I think this is one of those things where it's sneaky good because it's not like you're making huge risks with those second round picks and he's checking all the boxes necessary to you know build at least us they're not like a championship roster but at least they're like more of a stable contending roster if they're going to try contending to make the playoffs. Or what? Meaning, if you're going to try to have stability and become a contender for the playoffs, I'm not talking about championships. You need to have a oh, foundation contender of for the playoffs. Thank okay, yeah. you. Yeah, this, this helps them be for a contender the playoffs. For, because for how the old is he? Like, what, 23, 24 years old? Yeah. If you develop him the right way, he has all the makings to be a solid player. Right, and to your point, Adrian Wojnarowski reported over the weekend that Anthony Davis could be back in the Lakers lineup as soon as this week. Obviously, he needs to uh, continue to test that foot. I'm curious, though, Kendrick Perkins, how would you grade this trade? You know what? I give it a B plus. I give it a B plus. Let me let me explain why, right? When you look at Rui and you look at his his size, his athleticism, and the wing position is the most important position in the game today. And so you have this young man who I'm not knocking the Wizards organization, but they didn't have a LeBron James. And I'm not talking about a LeBron James on the floor. I'm talking about off the floor. So now this young fella could learn how to take care of his body. He had one of the greatest, if not the greatest, to ever play the game of basketball that he could communicate with, learn from how to work on his body, how to work on his game, how to be a true professional. So it's good for the Lakers short term and it's great for the Lakers long term because wow. now you have this young piece that you can mold and go into <laughs> and, and develop him. And so it's great. Number one issue for the Lakers were shooting. Now this is a big that can shoot a little bit more than let's say like a Thomas Bryant. Agreed. So this is an improvement. But their number one need. They don't even that play the same to, position. I, I, I'm just saying they play like the power forward, small forward role. Hybrid, they play yeah. the hybrid position, right? So the number one need was shooting. And I still don't think they address it. They're better in that position, but not from a 32 to a 42. They still have that gaping hole that they need to address. Sure, but at the end of the day, it's relatively low stakes. They needed a big wing defender, and right. Murray could potentially mm -hmm. fill that role. This kind of culminates, though. This has been a big, eventful couple of days Ooh. for the Los Angeles Lakers. In case you guys missed it, they that had a last gutsy night. win Ooh. last night. Yeah. Let's head to Moda Center. Speaking of this one, Dame Lillard was the story of the first half. I mean, watch this. Dame goes, gets it to go, starts jawing a little bit back and forth with Patrick Beverly here. Surprise. Their conversation extends. And uh, Rich, after this little, what, what oh, do you call I this? Know. A kerfuffle? Oh, this, one the run this is when the kerfuffle started. This is when the kerfuffle started, and then the Blazers went on a 38 to one Ooh, look at the rain. run look to at the rain. end the half. So this is the point in the night where I'm like, yeah. cool, I had dinner reservation, let's run go. Again? What was the run 38 to one. Okay, just Time to go. Dinner <laughs> reservation. To one, 31 to 8. 31 to 8. 31 to 8. There we go. I was like, I was ready to go to my dinner reservation. And then Good the man. LeBron show. Well, it, it was so impressive watching LeBron go to work. I was watching this game and I was like, wait a second. Are they down? Because I was also watching the Warriors game. I was back. I was yeah. jumping back and forth. Maybe a little bit of football. Who knows? But the fourth quarter comes, and you're like, okay, the Lakers are on a run. But that run never stops. Very similar to the, to the Trailblazers running that How first half. How Brian hitting threes? I know. Or five from three. And then LeBron backing down his man down low. Cheney gets it to go. Look, that's where he wants to go, and that's why, you know, adding a Rui is going to be important to be able to make sure he can keep doing this. But look at that. The effort. Okay. Oof. Finish. I was speaking to Thomas Bryan a couple of days ago. He actually told me that Russell Westbrook has been a big part of his yeah. success, who's pushed him to run the floor. And okay. then Patrick Beverly, I think he's saying his he watch is broken. He stole his clock. He stole his watch. I'm sorry. Now, Dave, I'm not going to disrespect you. Let's take a listen to LeBron James after the game. <laughs> One or two ways you can either go out and you can just lay down and get ready for the next game, or you can see what can happen in the third quarter and make a game of it. And, uh, you know, for us as competitors and our team and our makeup this year, uh, we're not a lay-down team. Uh, it's just it's just not the makeup of our club. Um, so uh, we came out and, and, and showed the makeup of our club in the third quarter, gave ourselves a chance going into the fourth and turning it into a, you know, a few possession game, into a couple possession game, then one possession game was able to take the lead. Uh, I believe on uh, that Thomas three on the left wing, finally took the lead. Uh, yep. yep. Yeah, so, you know, after that, we just started trying to get some stops and keep building that lead up. 
you know, from one to three to five or whatever the case may be, all the way up into seven at one point. So just to contextualize how crazy this comeback was, the Lakers' 25-point halftime comeback, the largest in LeBron's regular season career that covers over 1,400 games. That's also just the third 25-point halftime comeback by the Lakers in the shot clock era. However, I mentioned that comeback it was the largest in LeBron's regular season career, but let's flash back to the first round of the 2017 Ooh, playoffs. I had a great view of this one. Uh, he also <laughs> helped erase a 25-point <laughs> halftime. This was game three against the Pacers. James was I'm plus 30 oh, in the second Look at half. Cheering. He yeah, posted 28-7-6 and six yeah. after the break to leave the Cavs to a 119-114 win. Richard, we know where you were because this 100%. is how your numbers stacked up 100%. against LeBron's in that comes yeah, well, see, this, there. No, this is one of those things. This is the group that got us back into it, and like a true great coach, Tyron Lou, <sighs> he went with the unit that go, went going. If we want to start looking at plus and minuses, I played four minutes. I had nothing to do with the 19-point <laughs> deficit. I had nothing to do with the 19-point comeback. That's just the truth. So I was watching. I was like, uh, these boys uh, might get, you know who else? There's lots of players over there. Because it was no, beautiful to watch. No. You were no, minus.